FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get in a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page. Where you place your bets, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's at FanDuel.com slash UCSS. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. If FanDuel could have put odds on the Browns' chances of moving to Brook Park after the renderings coming out, it would have been about minus 10,000. <laughs> and that is now official. The Browns making it official that they will pursue a dome at Brook Park, leaving downtown. Mayor Bibb said he still hopes to have negotiations in the future, but that seems far-fetched at this point. Is this the best move for the franchise, guys? At the end of the day, take everything of your personal ideas out. Is this the best move for the franchise moving forward? Of course. Yes. Like this was this was always gonna happen. It was a no brainer. Um, listen, anytime you can upgrade your facility, you know, to be honest, man, like the the money they was gonna sink into that thing on the lake wasn't gonna make no sense. They didn't have no infrastructure around it. They can't build it up. Why not go have a, a blank slate? And, and look, I know the Browns are terrible, but look, Browns fans from all over the world are gonna want to come see a state of the art new stadium, a new new building. I, I go back and look at the energy that the Gateway Project had. Right. It, it, you know, uh, Jacobs Field and, and, and Gund Arena were the talk of the town. Everybody came in, and at the time, Camden Yards, I think, was a little bit before um, Jacobs Field, but everybody talked about it, how great it was. They got all-star games. They got, you know, different things that they were given within one or two years, and this is going to be the same case with this. You, you look forward to Taylor Swift didn't come before, I bet you uh, the Kelsey brothers can get her down here now. Unless they break up before then. then yeah. Cleveland will be off her list then forever. She, then she'll mark it off. But don't mess that up for us. I, They're going to get a Super Bowl, too. They might get a Final Four. They got the women's Final Four. This yep. is a great opportunity to get that basketball venue. So, to me, even if the Browns suck, it, this will be a pilgrimage for people to go to and, and at least have something that, that, that looks nice. Mayor Bibb said yesterday that they've done a study that shows that they will lose $30 million annually in revenue for downtown. I do feel for these downtown businesses, these small businesses. Yeah. Um, I know that Mayor Bibb made a point yesterday that I'm sure had Jimmy Haslam, every vein in his neck was probably popping out when he made the point that this is mostly going to disproportionately affect uh, Cleveland citizens of color because they're the ones that rely on those 10 days of work. Um, and that's a fair point. There are a lot of folks that w live in, uh, in the downtown area that look forward to those 10 paychecks that they get for walking the stands and selling beer and doing whatever they're doing in concessions and everything else. All of that being said, they are going to get a Super Bowl probably 2030 is my guess. The league has rewarded cities that build new stadiums with Super Bowls. So much so that when MetLife was built, they did the unthinkable and gave a cold weather northern city a Super Crazy. Bowl. Yeah. When they played it in New Outdoor Jersey. Outdoor shit. Outdoor. Yeah. Outdoor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minnesota has hosted multiple right, Super right, Bowls. Right. Detroit right. has hosted multiple Super Bowls. Yeah. This now puts our city and we're not going to be in a regular rotation. We're not going to get it like Miami gets it and you probably get one. Vegas. You're going to get one. We'll get one for sure. Now, 20 years down the road, I think Detroit's had multiple. Depends Minnesota's how it goes, had multiple. right? Depends how, how, how it gets pulled off. Yeah, they're yeah. not going to be in the heavy rotation. Right. The heavy rotation is going to be L.A., Miami, Tampa, Vegas. Has we know Detroit what that is. Multiple? Dallas. Detroit got one. Who? Detroit. I thought, I thought they played one at the Silverdome. No, I think they, they never played, played one at the I Silver thought the one with Jerome so. Bettis was playing. They've got one. They played Pittsburgh. one in their new stadium. Oh, you're right. Maybe. Maybe. They, I think they, maybe I, they did. No, get they one. did. Yeah. It's, uh, Pittsburgh, Seattle. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Pittsburgh, okay. Seattle. And, and what you might get, you might get the Big Ten championship. Listen, now they're you playing them in Matt. Indianapolis. Why, they could easily play that yeah. yep. in Cleveland with the Dome. Your point to the Final Four. We'll, we'll get a Final Four. The money that flows into a city from a Super Bowl. It's not going to cover all of the losses from their $30 million annually. But it's going to be a financial windfall like we've never seen for any sporting event. World what? Series, NBA Finals, whatever. I, Super Bowl tops them all. Yeah. In terms I of was money. recently reading an article that said new stadiums don't really 
benefit the citizens overall. Well, no, they don't. But they it's, do. it depends, and this is yeah. where I go back to, it depends on who's paying for it and how much. Right. right. They don't have the funding figured out. So how are they announcing that this is what's happening? And someone told me a week ago, and this is fascinating, that the game of checkers and chess that's going on behind the scenes between the Browns and the city yeah. is fascinating. Oh, What Mayor Bibb did yesterday, I love Mayor Bibb. I haven't hidden my thoughts on that. I think he's great for our city. He was a gangster boss yesterday. He got in front of the camera before the Browns could make the announcement. He was able to put his spin on it. Now, look, I didn't agree with everything he said. I thought, I thought there were things in there where he was maybe reaching a little bit. But I do know this to be true. As the Browns were giving them one ridiculous deadline after another, knowing, thinking they wouldn't hit it, they hit them all. Yeah. They never said, we need more time. They hit them. Mayor Bibb's team behind the scenes has been doing unbelievable work. I think that eventually this was a fait accompli because Jimmy gets what Jimmy wants. We've said for and a Jimmy year, wanted yeah. to move. We've said when, for a year. When this was Jimmy went to LA and saw football amusement world, Jimmy said, I need one of these. And by the way, all of the owners are saying, I need one of this is yeah. the future. These foot NFL amusement parks are going to be in 28 cities. And what's 30 cities. There'd be one in New York for two teams and one in LA for two teams. But what you're what you're talking about, these owners now have realized, oh, I can make money from other things other than just my gate sales. Mm-hmm. I can have 176 acres that would have 30 restaurants, five hotels, maybe some residential, and I'm going to own all of that land. The property values in Brook Park have soared over the last three months once this became obvious that it was going to happen. So So, what I do think is going to happen is there's still going to be a huge amount of money that flows into Cleveland because the Browns are here. It's not like we're losing them to Baltimore. And also, I think that the city needs to pivot and, and look at it this way. The glass is more than half full. Now, for the first time ever, they have Cleveland's most valuable real estate at their disposal to do whatever they want with it. Don't screw this up. And they're going to get Burke, too. But is that finally going to happen? It's going to happen. Okay. But to your point about yeah. the city doesn't reap the benefits, if, if they don't put any money into it, they're going to reap the benefits. And the, the, Yeah, well, the city won't give any money, right? Well, the, no, I'm just saying. No, neither yeah, will the county. No. If the, the, the way that a lot of these things get built is the hammer that teams hold over cities is give us what we want or we'll leave. Right, right. They can't do that. No, they don't have the hammer. Because of the Modell rules. Because of the Modell. So I'm really curious to see. I mean, the county's basically already told them this isn't a good idea. And the county and the city are in lockstep here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I think this is going to wind up with Jimmy writing the check for most of it. I agree. And and that's how it should be. It should be. It absolutely should be. I I think they're going to go to the state. They're going to try and get money out of the state. Yep, they are. The Bengals are looking for money from the state for this. But if it winds up that he spends 75, 80%, 85%, that's, that's okay. great. That's great. Yeah, then I'm do it. For it. I mean, if, he, where, if he's spending his own money, I don't care how much he makes. Where well, it, what he's going to do but, is I think he's going to sell 10% of, his, of the team, get $500 million, yeah. and that's a big chunk of what he needs. Yeah, that's where, true. Would you happen to know anybody that would like to buy that, that piece of the team? Listen, if he put 10% <laughs> of the team on the market tomorrow, there'd be a line, there'd the be a line from here to New York. Not of, to mention people that want to buy it. Not yeah. to mention that's the way that you get into the game is minority is, right. ownership. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's why Jimmy that's got how into he the got game. into the game in Pittsburgh. You yeah. get in, you get vetted, you're into the boys' club, yep. and then when a team becomes available, you spin off the front of the that. front of the that's line. What the Sher- now, that's what, what the Shermans did with the Indians when they went to the Royals. That's how the now, game's played. Now the city, listen, I need to see something though. If you not, you, you you've already said you have money available earmarked for certain things for the Browns. Browns are gone. How are you? How are you not going to allocate those resources? Well, Mayor Bibb, when he was on with us, did say a lot of that money was going to come from taxes, you know, related to the Browns well, being. Well, he Cleveland. was asked yesterday, and I was glad he was. Yeah. But I was hosting from the set, and I wasn't at the news conference, and I wish yeah. that I could have been. I had a long list of questions that I would have loved to fire, but Lena Lai, our reporter, did a great job. She asked a lot of really good questions. One question was, okay, so who who owns the syntax, and Mayor Bibb was very clear on this. We own the syntax. The city owns the syntax. It may have been earmarked to go to the Browns, right. but we own it. And the county believes what we believe, that they also own it. Yeah. So I think this is a pivotal moment for the city of Cleveland 
this is the moment that a lot of the non-sports fans who have looked at our city and said, why are we where we are? Why aren't we Chicago? We've got Lakefront. We've got a beautiful city with a ton to offer. This, the Browns' decision to move them from downtown, while it will take a couple of months, maybe even longer for this to set in, I think the city needs to look at this as maybe the best opportunity of growth that we've ever had. The most valuable real estate in our city is now theirs to do whatever they want to. And Burke is also going to be theirs very soon. So you know how expansive that is. From Cleveland Brown Stadium yeah. all the way to the end of Burke Lakefront Airport. Right. Go to Chicago. Go to I, Chicago. I was just there. And yeah. And, and, it's my, it's my it's favorite great. American city because I, of what they've done with their lakefront. Obviously, Lake a lot, Michigan's better. Yeah, but and there's a lot still, more money in Chicago. There is a lot more still, money. But yeah. now we have an opportunity to bring. Right. I want a major corporation to announce that they're going to put their headquarters right there on Lake Erie. Well, that's right what, there in downtown Cleveland. I've had many business people tell me that like Sherwin Williams did it. They brought sure. their head. Now you need more. We and do. I, yeah. I actually asked Jimmy that when he still was part of pilot, like you can bring pilot here. And, and obviously they're out of it now. And he had said, right. no, but, and Dan has brought a lot of the quick and rocket, whatever they're calling that company. Now he's brought a lot of it here. They've got a lot of well, look at the business Cavs here. New, new practice facility that they, they had a big news conference this week yeah. about what that's going to look like. If you haven't seen the renderings, go online and look at the renderings. It's in the flats. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's going to be the most beautiful thing on the Cuyahoga River. I believe River. that's why they went the renovate route that they did and not try – because their arena is still probably bottom half in the league. Because Is it really? Oh, Even yeah. after the renovation? Yeah. yeah. Just because wow. there's so many unbelievable new arenas coming up. Look what they're building in L.A. for the Clippers. It's unbelievable. No, I know it is. And, oh, yeah. And – but I think – Ballmer's like – put all these tech gadgets yes, into the into But the they're seats. choosing to pour their money into the practice, which I think is smart, actually. Yeah. So they're gonna they're going that route. But you're right in terms of I do think we're on the precipice of something in Cleveland here where you, you've got that soccer stadium that's coming, like the ten thousand twelve thousand seat. It is. Wait and see what um, and that's going to be in downtown. I mean, in the shadow of downtown. Wait and see what the sports commission is able to do with that. David Gilbert and his crew. You bet. How many times he's going to be able to fill that. You bet. You've got the Cavs practice facility reimagining just what's a blight area right now in the flats. This Brook Park Dome area, if they can revitalize. Like, Cleveland, five years from now, seven years from now, could look completely different than what it is. But you still need the money. You still need the business. And, but, to but, back here, here, but here's another thing too: when you get them corporations to come through here, best believe that's the key. They are getting tax breaks though. Mm-hmm. So they you are, not you not they but, not gonna go, go oh, they not gonna get taxed like that. So you got to make them real. But they're still bringing people in. And yes. you don't give them a lifetime of tax abatement. You give them a period of right. tax abatement. And here's the difference: like I, I know a lot of people. Mike Polk and I have had these conversations, are furious that their city would give Sherwin-Williams. Listen, Sherwin-Williams had all the data in the world that staying in Cleveland was the wrong move. It's the wrong move yeah. financially. Because every other city in Austin, Texas, and all of these southern locations, all of these other cities are showing them plans. Well, you don't have to play. You don't, we won't charge you tax. It's not so much about the tax breaks. It's like if you build it, they will come. What already has happened in downtown Cleveland, and I've seen it, as you walk downtown, you see it. There are new residential high-rises that are going in in downtown Cleveland that would never have broken ground if Sherwin-Williams didn't say, we're here. You're right. Because Sherwin-Williams was the first fish in, now Mayor Bibb, and I believe he's going to do this, is going to go to other major corporations, and here's what he's going to say. When you come to Cleveland, Ohio, you'll be in the lower 20% in the country in employee housing. That is a major recruiting tool, major. Yeah. There's times I didn't take jobs in cities because the cost of living was just too high. Sure. I didn't mm-hmm. want to go there. Yeah. The one thing everybody says about Cleveland, Ohio, oh my God, the cost of living. I can't believe you guys buy houses for nothing here. Yep. Yeah, right. Yep. And that, is, can, and that is huge. So if I'm Mayor Bibb, I am hosting Every single CEO of a major corporation who's in the hopper for a potential move. And and by the way, the the property that is east of us where we sit on Lakeside Avenue, which has a view of Lake Erie, is blight. It's all empty factories. When that is raised and it's leveled, 
you're talking about three or four major corporations can be housed right here on Lakeside. Yep. You're in the shadow of downtown. Young, upwardly mobile people love to live downtown. You're going to have more residential development in Cleveland. We've already seen a ton of it over the last five years. We're going to see more of that once he gets bigger corporations to sign on the dotted line to move to Cleveland. I think after a stagnation period of more than a decade where Cleveland, I, I, from a distance I was watching it saying, what are they doing? It was more like, what aren't they doing? I believe that this city has energy. It has momentum. Mayor Bibb is smart and aggressive. And you're right. I'd give it 10 years. 10 years from now, we're gonna, our sports complexes are going to be amazing. Yeah. And our city infrastructure is going to look wildly different than it does today. That's how the people of Cleveland will benefit from the Browns leaving downtown. And wait to see the, how they develop around Progressive Field and Rocket Mortgage. Well, that's why Blitzer that's bought coming. in. That's why Blitzer that's brought exactly in. That's exactly why he and bought in. And that's coming. There's going to be like a little ballpark village. They're trying. There is. That garage may go away. Uh, I think good. it will go yeah. away. There's a lot of area for development. Yeah, go yes, ahead. Yes, and that's idea. why Blitzer, was, that's yeah. why the, the Guardians were so attractive to Blitzer. Yes, he's a sports owner. Yes, he, he has seen the trend. He's, he jumped on board before the wave crashed. And what he basically said was, sure, there's money in pro sports. Those teams are always going to increase in value. Yep. But the real money that owners have for years been leaving on the table is what goes on yep. around that That's venue. Right. And I've heard from people with the Guardians, that is a game changer for them. If they can develop the area around there, it's, Will it's, they actually it's, spend on payroll? It's free money. Wow. It's free money for the yeah, payroll. I agree. Good.